Back with more camera stuff today. This time it's the Zeiss Icon 35. Welcome to Hack a Week. So this is a pretty nifty little camera that I acquired recently from a friend. Uh, guess they were moving away. Somebody cleaned out an attic, whatever. It came up and they thought I would be interested and I said, sure, I'll take it. So offered them $50 for it, even though they didn't want any money. And uh, it was well worth it. It's a really cool um, folding camera. These were popular in the 50s. You just open it up like that and there is the whole lens shutter, everything assembly, the lens for the viewfinder, for the split image focusing. And to fold it back up, you squeeze here and push in. Oh, it's so precise. Such neat little stuff on here. This thing is so well built. It's over engineered. It's a very high end camera for its time. These were made from 1950 to 1955. And it has a selenium light meter and you push on this little side button right here and it pops open. So that's with the window open. That's with the window closed. There are tiny little slits in there. So you've got two different levels of light metering available. One of them is the green scale here. The other one is the black scale. So you see what it reads out here. You read this after you've set your ASA and it will tell you what f-stop to uh, set everything up at, including shutter speed, etc. So it helps you with proper exposure. This light meter is not working. Everything else on the camera works fine. I have shot film with it and used a handheld light meter but this one isn't working and more than likely it's just something to do with some connection in there to the selenium cell. It's not battery operated at all. It's, um, it's just a selenium cell. It produces a voltage and makes the needle move. Uh, the lens in these is pretty nifty. It's um, a 2.8 f2.8 45 millimeter coated lens on this one. It's got the T designation so that means it's the uh, optional coated lens, which uh, helps a lot with lens aberration and such, and you don't necessarily need a shroud on there in the sun. It still helps, but anyway, we're going to get into the top of this and see if we can figure out what's going on with the light meter. While we're in there, we're going to clean some things up like the viewfinder, the prism that's in there, and all that good stuff. Let's get started. All right, let's get into it here. Um, first of all, something nifty here on the top I just saw. It says Zeiss Icon Stuttgart, Germany, made in the same city as Porsche 911s. How about that? So where do we start? Well, with the obvious, I guess, there is a screw there and there's a screw there. Here's one here um, on this cold shoe cold as in there is no electrical connection it's just to hold a flash and you would hook it up elsewhere on the shutter there's a couple of screws there uh, looks like there is a spanner nut back here and I think that's about it so let's get started with these screws first I need let's see a flat blade screwdriver let's try this one I'm going to assume that they're right hand thread yes that one is Off. Oh, look at that. This little tiny spring washer just went fall lion. I want to redo this surface in green so I can see stuff better. Plus, it just makes for better video background. Now we've got the screw over here. And that is also a right hand thread. And let's see if this is going to just lift off or what we've got going on. Maybe it's this still does not want to pop right off. What's holding that on, I wonder? It could be it just lifts off and this is attached to the top. Yeah, let's try that. Anyway, let's get this one out. We go to the smaller flathead. Any screws on these cameras. This one's wrestling with me. Don't think that's going to come off yet. I'm going to leave these two in for now. 
because it looks like this comes off. Maybe this stays behind. You know what? I'm going to take them out anyway. Nice to work with a tray that's got multiple compartments where you can keep track of things as you go. And uh, makes it easy just to kind of group things together. All right, that takes care of the, the cold shoe. It's got this spanner nut that's right here. I'm going to use my what used to be snap ring pliers that I use for this purpose now. I don't know if they're going to work on this. Let's find out. It's a little tricky to get them in there. These are like square slots in this thing. Oh. I'm going to have to put it up there and then squeeze here. That's not going to work. How about the tweezers? don't know if they're strong enough. Ah, it worked. Take that out, and this tiny little peg. Not sure what that does. I guess we'll find out after we get in there. It's all the screws. Still unsure about this, but I'm going to just try pulling up on the case on this side. No, nope, it doesn't work to pull by that because that stays behind. There we go. That that comes up on that end, but still not on this end. Yes, there's something still holding this on. We need to figure this out. Okay, let's let's see if we can get this by just pulling hard. <laughs> And as is typical sometimes, things just went flying. So there's a spring washer. Should have had my hand on top of that. I should know better. Somewhere, ah, there we are. There's my little ASA dial. And this. So that was just a kind of a friction fit. And there's two more screws underneath. Oh, it's one more. Hold on. One more flat washer. Now we can get these. Now this cover should lift off, and indeed, indeed it wants to. Come on, come on. There we go. Okay, cover off. Uh, so with the cover off, nothing locks this down in the front. It wants to flop around, so got to beware of that. This all covers up the prism for the viewfinder. So you've got a dual image, split image viewfinder assembly going on here. So you're looking through this and this lens is working with this lens to move one way or the other an image. So what you see is you'll see the background image you're looking at through the viewfinder and then the split image and then all you do is focus until they converge. And once they converge, you're in focus. Pretty simple. Um, there's lots of variations of a split image focusing on viewfinders in many cameras. So let's take these two covers off. Let's see if that pops off now. Yes, it does. So there is the prism, and it's going to reflect light from this here to here to here and back. So I can pull this out and clean it all up. All right, so that's all, all that's all out loose, whatever is this going to pop out. It still, it still feels like it's in there kind of solid. I'm wondering if there's a bit of adhesive on it. 
um, underneath there that holds it in. Maybe this stuff has a certain amount of that to it. I want to be very careful with it, obviously. Well, I think it's just stuck with the tape over time. So I'm going to take a piece of wood here, this wood dowel thingy, and just try prying a little bit and see if it breaks loose. Yes, it did. Just erring to the side of caution. You know, it's a piece of glass. I don't want to just go grabbing at it with like a screwdriver. So there's four surfaces here. One, two, three, four. And they're pretty dusty. It's not horrible, but it's dust. And it does make for a cloudy viewfinder. I'm gonna put this aside for now. There's a front window here and the lens in the viewfinder. There's one back here, there's one right here. And they are pretty dusty as well. So we'll get those cleaned up. We'll get after all this cleaning up stuff on the reassembly side of things. But let's get to the heart of what we're after, the light meter. So it looks like that screw comes off, that cover comes off, then this plastic plate comes out of the way, then I can get at that screw, that screw, and this one, and lift all that stuff out. First, this one. Cover. Clean that too. Now we can get these two screws. These two have a bit of lacquer on them or something, possibly just gum arabic, shellac, probably shellac, just to help them stay in place. I use a little bit of enamel paint on screws that had stuff like that when I put them back together. One more to go. This is a long screw here on the side. Covers off, and there's that lovely meter. Look at that. So let's take a closer look what we've got going on here. There's a wire here from the meter that runs into this little hole that's filled with wax. There's another wire that comes out, goes over to the to the uh, to the chassis of the camera, and that screw grounds it out to the chassis. This one runs down here, so this is like mystery wire. <laughs> So I'm assuming it runs down and goes to the selenium cell and they put that wax in there to just keep everything solid and in place. Um, betting that there's some disconnect between the selenium cell and here. That's why it stopped working. This needle is so delicate, very delicate. I bumped it a minute ago and it did weird things. <laughs> it bent very easy, but fortunately it bent back very easy as well. There is something underneath here. These two wires run here. There's a wire that runs out there, also comes to here. I'd like to see what the heck that's about. So I'm gonna see if I can gently lift off this cover without hurting, like surgery. All right, that's out of the way. So both of these wires, oh, okay, that's just a single wire and it's just sort of stuck to the edge in there, that's all. So it comes out here and then goes up to the selenium cell also. That goes into the inductor winding. Okay, so we've got a general idea what's happening. Let's see if we can get this selenium cell off by taking these screws out. just popped right out of there. <laughs> Let's finish taking this screw out. Okay. With its little spring-loaded uh, hinge. Whoops. So that is the cover to the selenium cell, which is right there. 
it just kind of fell out. So that tells me that the connection of this is just like a friction fit, something touching the cell. So we need to investigate that. This is the cover that goes over it and it's got that little spring tab on it, which holds, I guess you could call this kind of a condenser, so to speak. You see how one way those veins are painted black and this way they're clear, kind of diffuses the light as it comes through into the selenium cell. And let's take a look at the front. There is a big copper plate right there. So already I'm thinking maybe that that copper plate isn't making a good enough contact back here. And on this side, that bare strip makes contact with that strip. And that's where the energy from here makes its way back up to the meter. That strip looks kind of dirty. That looks pretty corroded and dirty. So maybe all we need to do is clean up these two points on this selenium cell, the back and the front, clean the copper really well, clean that little brass spring really well, put it back together and I'm betting that it's gonna work. So that is the cover to the selenium cell, which is right there. It just kind of fell out. So that tells me that the connection of this is just like a friction fit, something touching the cell. So we need to investigate that. This is the cover that goes over it and it's got that little spring tab on it, which holds, I guess you could call this kind of a condenser, so to speak. You see how one way those veins are painted black and this way they're clear kind of diffuses the light as it comes through into the selenium cell there is a big copper plate right there so already i'm thinking maybe that that copper plate isn't making a good enough contact back here and on this side that bare strip makes contact with that strip and that's where the energy from here makes its way back up to the meter. I have had this eraser for over 35 years. Uh, I had it when I took a course in graphic arts in my uh, late 20s. <laughs> wow. Uh, this side is for ink, that side is for pencil, and it's kind of a nice abrasive. It works really well to clean off contacts and copper. So I think the best way to clean this without being too harsh on it is to just hold it like this in my hand, use my little eraser. And the only points of contact are these two little bumps. Uh, so it's pretty much a minimal amount that's gotta be cleaned off. So same thing here with the um, corrosion spots. See that strip there and that strip there. That thing does a good job. It's been in hiding all these years and I could have used it for this even sooner. So first we drop it in like so. I'm gonna bend this just a little bit and preload it so that it makes really good contact with that cell and also helps hold it in. And I've gotta work kind of like this where I've got it like this, drop it into place, hold it down and then load the screws in from this side. So that's gonna be a little bit of fun. So I've got a screw balanced on my screwdriver. This is going to be fun. I just know it. And I'm going to drop this on there. Get this screw lined up over on this side. And let's check the contact. Yes, it's making good contact with both of the little nubs. I'm going to move that over a little. This goes in. There's a notch right here. That notch needs to line up with the brass strip. And this should push in and hit the back of everything, which is the body. And then that's what keeps the selenium cell lined up. Now we put the frame back in, which 
those these two little slots go in first. I may have to slide it over. Yeah. Well, this is this is fun. This is what I like about bringing you videos like this, where you're jumping right into it, right along with me, for the first time, because I have never done this before. Okay. Now we go back up here and get this other one connected. Now this is uh, another electrical connection to the chassis. We'll see if this thing works. So far, I don't see the needle. The needle doesn't seem to be moving. I don't know. Point it right at some light. And um, it's trying. Maybe, nah. It's just, mm -mm. It's not working, folks. On closer inspection, it looks like the spring that's attached to the needle that kind of recenters it is kind of wadded up. So I guess what I've got to do now is see if I can get these two fasteners out, lift this off, and straighten out the spring. Maybe that's it. Before we check that spring, I just want to one last time check voltage coming up to that meter. So the uh, the cell is in, it's being held in place by this cover and that little strip. And if we go up to the top, that, uh, that small strip on the hinge, it's connected to this part of the hinge plate. So I'm going to probe it right there. And I'm also going to connect it right here on this wire because we figured out that this wire does nothing more than connect the meter to the chassis ground and let's probe it right there at that wire that comes through from the copper plate and it's measuring 0.16 volts so if I tip it on its back and point that at the light and we check it again we should see a higher voltage reading yeah, one. So we know it's working, right? I can shade it, it drops. Okay. And I have tried the tweezers. I tried some uh, drafting dividers and they're not working either. So I'm kind of down to, uh, God, I hate to say this, pliers and see if maybe, just maybe, I can get lucky and these will break loose. This is always just so iffy. There's hardly any lip there to grab. Oh, it's moving. Good. And I need to lift this off. I think the spring is attached to it. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. It's uh, again, it's like working on a clock, as I've said before. So the main issue was indeed the spring. It was kind of wadded up here and not allowing this to float freely. And now it does, and the meter is working. If I block it off from light, it goes that way. If it gets extra light, it goes the other way. So now what I need to do is disconnect that lead. That will take away any kind of a signal getting to the meter. And I should be able to calibrate it because it wants to go to a position like right about here somewhere. I'm going to push it there. It should go to like there when there's no light. When there's no voltage, it should also go there. And then I can turn this small piece of brass right here that's got the spring soldered to it right there. Just like a clock. This is where you can move it this way or this way. It's kind of like the fast slow setting on a spring on a clock. Well, this is going to do our zero setting. So I'm going to disconnect this and see if I can calibrate it. I'm going to take this screw out. And as I suspected, the needle moves back to a neutral position. Let's lift this off from the ground completely. There we go. I'm going to drop this cover back in place for now just to get an idea with the scale back in place. It's going to set there lined up with that screw hole. 
so I can get an idea of where I need to calibrate to. And it looks like uh, there's a dot right there. I'm guessing that dot was put there for calibration purposes. So I'm going to assume that and take this back off. And now I'm going to move this little tiny lever. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Meter. Damn. Let's check it right about there and see what we have. And that looks good. Okay, now that that's resolved, we can start putting all of this back together. Okay, back to the overhead. Let's see, what can we do about these optics? Cleaning these up. I think just a simple wipe down with some Q-tips and glass cleaner. And a quick check just to make sure the meter still works okay after assembly. Yes, it does. Alright, the prism's back in. This camera got dropped once. There's a ding right there. I wonder if maybe the drop might have been enough of a shock that it made that spring for the meter jump out of place and get bent. Eh, well, whatever. It works now. This little thingy that goes in the back, it's got a concentric screw on it. There's a peg that's offset from the center, so when you turn the screw, it will in turn adjust something else, and it lines right up with the light meter. So I'm wondering if it might be just maybe a little calibration screw for the light meter. So that little thing goes into the back um, of the induction coil that's around the outside of that. And I think what it does is it moves it like this slightly, which would offset the needle a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna turn the screw and we're gonna watch what happens with that needle. Indeed, it is a calibration screw. Isn't that cool? All it does is just move that coil back and forth. I'm sure of it. So with everything dark, it should line up with that dot, as I assumed before. I'm pretty sure that's what that dot is all about. So if I cover this thing from all light, it's lined up with the dot right now. Um, let's just try adjusting it a bit and just see how it reacts. So, right there. Great success, I'm very happy with that. Um, let's see how this works. So you open this up, we've got light coming in. You take this dial and you line it up. You make sure your ASA is the film you have. I've selected 400. So where this is lined up with the needle right now, and on the black scale, because it's open, when it's closed, there's a little green shows up right there to tell you to read the green scale. So we're on the black scale, we're lined up there, and um, let's see. If I am at 1 50th of a second, I have to have my aperture at 2.8. So uh, look forward to getting out and shooting some pictures of this black and white. There's already a big fingerprint on there. That viewfinder is so prone to being touched by fingers, it's not even funny. But um, yeah, it's pretty neat. You just pop the lens out like this. And um, that's the shutter cock, that's the shutter release. The focus ring is up here. Back here is shutter speeds. I'll read out right there on top of the lens and this is your aperture. Really cool little camera. So glad the light meter's working. Took a little diligence to figure it out, but uh, it is working again and this is a fully functional, way cool German engineered camera that was super high end for its time. It's got some heft to it as well. I love this thing. Um, it's fun to go out and shoot with, even with a handheld light meter. And now that I have one on board, I can compose my shots 
even faster and look forward to it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. There will be more camera videos coming up. I got a few more things to do with pen taxes in MX, to be specific. Till next time.